she comes in and she's angry. Like, she is pissed. She's like, you lied to me. You lied to me. Got some lamb. Get them lit. Let's go. So, if you guys saw my last video, it was all the jobs I've worked before. And one of them I mentioned was, like, my current job. Well, I quit that job. And I want to tell you guys why. So, my friend actually works at this... Well, I'm not... Mm, I want to say she's my friend, but like we know each other. We're in the same age group and I have like acquaintances who are friends with her. So we kind of know each other by association. So I saw that she was posting on her social media that this position was hiring. So I was like, oh, it's a cute job. It seems easy. I know how to do reception and it pays well. So I'm just like, okay, let me just get it. And because I dropped out of school, I was like, well, I can't be a bum. I can't be a bum. So let me just take this job and stop complaining, you know? So I took the job and immediately, off the bat, immediately I knew that I didn't like this job. And not because I don't like the field of work, I didn't like the employer. I didn't like my employer. But I was like, you know, it's maybe my first impression of this employer. And I'm not, I'm not bashing anyone. This is, I'm not. Like story times, I don't like doing story times because it makes everyone else out to be the bad guy and I'm the good guy. But this is just like me recounting my experience at this location. So I'm not trying to bash on anyone. Don't leave no hate comments. If you're my ex-employer watching this, I didn't mention your name or your business anywhere in my video. So you can't sue me for defamation. This is just my recount of what ha happened. Right off the bat, like I just had a bad vibe. Like I just had a bad vibe about taking this job, I was like, you know, it's a pandemic. Um, I need the money, so I have loans to pay. So let me just take this job and like, you know, call it a day, whatever, whatever. It's not the rest of my life. It's just gonna be for the time being, you know? So I took the job and immediately I felt an, uh, I felt uh, there was a vibe. Like I felt like the vibe was a little bit off. So I was like, okay, is it a me thing? Is it a, just, uh, I'm new to the environment. Maybe I'm just new to this employer. You know, it could be a lot of reasons, I don't know why. I would come into training and it would be all cute and whatever and we're training, but he made me uncomfortable. He put me on edge, you know, like on edge. Um, and I was like, what is it? Like, like what is it? And it's a, it's a really small establishment too. So it was me, my friend, who was also like the other receptionist. And then there was our employer. So it was just the three of us in a tiny 300 square foot office like it's, it's a tiny office you know so i was like i'm just like what is it like what's setting me like what is setting off my alarms what's putting me on edge like why is the hair on the back of my neck raised and i was like you know what maybe i'm just new to this let me stick to this job because i need the money right now and i was also trying to move out of my house so i'm just like i need to keep the job like this I, if i'm gonna sign a lease for an apartment i need i'm gonna depend on this job so let me just keep it so as time went on, me and my coworker, we started becoming more friendly with each other and we would like, you know, chat. There would be, we would banter, you know. She would tell me about her lotion selection and like things in her personal life. And then I would like banter with her. I would tell her about my personal life. And like, we're cute. We're in the same age group and we're friends. It's cute, you know, like, we're, what are millennial, Gen Z? We're Gen Alpha? I don't even know what Gen, like we're, the TikTok generation, you know, we're like, we're like in that generation. So it's like, we're like, we're friends, whatever. It's cute, you know, it's kiki, you know? So we would be talking back and forth. And like me as a person, we've established that relationship, or at least I think we've established that relationship where we can be kind of like sarcastic to each other. Like she would tell me like, oh, can you pull up a file for me? And I'd be like, no, you can do it. But like, I still pull it up. I still pull the file up for her, even though I told her that she could pull it up. It's a joke. Okay, it's a joke. People, people will come in and like, people will come into our establishment and I would like look at their name and then sometimes people are a little snappy and I'm like, ooh, okay, well, she's a little snappy. And there's a company chat box, all that, whatever, like, you know, so we can communicate with each other. And obviously our employer can see through our messages as well as see onto my screen, but I would still talk shit. Like, like not, I'm like, I'm not talking shit, but it's just like, oh, like, you know, like a customer was a little snappy. So I would just like send her a message be like, oh, like they're a little snappy. Like what do I do? You know, make a little comment, nothing harmful. That went on. And then I was like doing my job real well. It was all kiki, whatever, whatever. But every time like my boss, was in the same room as us, I would feel like mad uncomfortable. And I don't know, like he to the other receptionist, like my friend who worked there, she's worked there for like way longer than I have. 
So him and her are like real close, just by like time duration of working there. They're real close, and I'm like the newcomer. So yeah, like obviously there is some distance between me and my employer, and obviously it's work, so it's not like I'm here to make friends. But it's just like there's that kind of that distance, you know. So I that's just something I've noticed, and it just like kind of made me more uncomfortable. So I was like, whatever, whatever. So I try to do my work, and then like if anything, I would just ask my friend, my coworker, if I needed help with something, I would just ask her instead of asking my employer. But as time went on, I was just like, yo, this job is like not it for me. It was just not it for me at all. So I'm just like, what am I gonna? What am I gonna? What am I gonna do? Like, what am I gonna do? I kind of need the money right now. I need to pay bills. You know, I gotta maintain my lifestyle. It's it's expensive being a bad bitch. Um. So I was like, whatever, whatever. So, but every like, oh my god. So after I, after I cried twice in my car after two scheduled shifts because that's how like on edge this job put me, like, it was putting me through dread, and, like, I cried in my car. Every day in the morning, I would, like, sit in my car until, like, the last minute before I had to go inside, and up until the last minute, like, right at that minute, I would be like, okay, put the motions in the back back seat and, like, go in and do your job. And I'm just like, oh, that's not healthy. I was on my phone a lot, like, I'm gonna admit that's on me. Um, I'm just on my phone because I get bored and like especially because during the pandemic not a lot of customers are coming in So I get bored and I play on my phone and like I do all my job description All, all the tasks that my job description tells me to do so I just do that and then when I'm done I'm sitting there bored like Should I count the clouds? He yelled at me twice before about being on my phone, so I stopped using my phone because I'm like, okay, well, bitch, I need to keep this job. But then one time, I brought my phone in because it was like an emergency thing that I had, emergency personal situation I had to deal with. So I had my phone on me, and it was on free time, so I was just kind of looking, I was looking through my phone just to see if there was any updates. And he saw me, and I was like, okay, whatever, like... Like, he's gonna yell at me, I don't give a fuck. So, at the end of the day, he sits me down. Mind you, I already clocked out at that point, but he was like, sit down, have a seat, and I was like, okay. Oh, my God. Before I tell you guys that, there was this other situation. This couple comes in, and in our office, like, he, my, my employer told me, okay, if anyone comes in and they don't have a mask, make them wear a mask. And we, if they don't have one, we provide one because we're connected to another building. Like, we're inside another building. This couple comes in and they're like, do you guys have a restroom? And I was like, no, we don't have a restroom, but you can go into the big building. They have a restroom, you can just go straight in and it's back there. And they're like, no, we don't want to go in there because they make us, they require wearing, us to wear masks. Oh, uh, do you not have a mask? Like, I can offer you one, we have some new ones. They, even the big building, the entrance to the big building, they offer masks. So I'm just like, do you guys need a mask? No, we don't want to wear a mask. Oh, okay. Well, it's our policy that if you want to come into our establishment, you have to wear a mask. They started getting riled up and they started getting like bitchy. Like, first of all, you're like 80 years old and you're bullying a 19 year old kid. Like, bitch, let's re reassess your situation there. They started getting like real snappy, real rude. And they're like, we don't want to wear a mask. Masks make you sick. Oh, well, it's just company policy. If it's a company policy, then why don't you have a sign up on your door? Well, there is a sign up. If you go look outside, there is a sign. No, we don't want to wear a mask. And then they just proceed to sit down in the waiting area and they, they refuse to wear a mask, but they want to be serviced. So I'm just like, okay, well, what the fuck? Me and the other reception, my coworker, she didn't even know what to do. So we messaged our employer and we're like, what's, what's going on? The, my employer, he was like, okay, whatever. Just allow me to service the customer. So I get them all checked in, prepared and whatever. And I send them in with my employer and I'm like, okay, whatever. Mind you, it was a couple, but only one of them was there to be serviced. The other one was only there to accompany. So the other one that was there to be accompanied, they were just sitting out there, but they were like being rude and snappy and like the service was taking a little long. And they were like, what's taking so long? So they run back where my employer was with the one scheduled to be serviced. And my employer was like, we're still in the service. Like, we're not done yet, you know? And so the person who runs in, they were like, oh. She was like, oh, okay. Well, and then so she leaves the back area where my employer and the person being serviced was, and she leaves the office building. Five minutes later, the person who came in to be serviced, he comes out and leaves as well. And I was like, okay cool, like, dust my hands of the situation, it's dealt with, I don't really care. The lady comes back, the one who wasn't scheduled to be serviced, she comes back and she's, she sits down immediately, 
and I was like, can I help you? Are you lost, lady? Like, what happened? And she, mind you, she's like sitting in the rating area, so she's like all the way back here, and I'm looking at her from reception, and she's like, I'm waiting for my husband. Um, your husband left. Keep that detail in mind, okay? Your husband left. I didn't say rudely like that. I was like, your husband left, ma'am. And she was like, oh, okay. So she leaves, and I'm like, okay, well, that was weird. Like, there's no sort of communication going on in that relationship or something. I don't know. Ten minutes go by, and I'm doing my work, and she comes back. Like, I see her, like, kind of peeping through the door. Her husband's behind her. She comes in, and she's angry. Like, she is pissed. She's like... You lied to me. You lied to me. Uh, what did I do, ma'am? You said my husband left and I went out and I sat in my car in the heat for 10 minutes and this whole time he was in the building. Yeah, he was here in this location and then he went out the door. He was in our Small building. I don't know about the big building. That's not where I work. I work in the small building inside the big building. I said... Ma'am, your husband left. He was here, he exited the door, he's no longer here, he left. You could have said that he went inside the big building, you made me sit in the heat, and like, I'm gonna report you. I'm gonna report you, I'm gonna report you. What are you gonna report me for? That's the thing about me, is that I feel bad for my employers because like, I don't take bullshit from customers. Like, customers is always wrong, bitch. Like, if you're gonna come in and check me, I'm... Let's keep that same energy because we can take it outside. I'm like, what did I do wrong? Like, he was here and he left. And then she storms out after her tirade. And I'm like, okay. Thankfully, there was no one who was coming in to be serviced directly after that party. But after they left, it was me, my coworker, and my employer. He comes out. And he yells at me! And he says that I handled that poorly. He comes out and he's like, you know, you could have handled that a little bit better. Yeah, they didn't want to wear masks, but you should have just let them come in to be serviced anyways, even if they weren't wearing a mask. Okay, yeah, but then why did you tell me that we require customers to wear masks? Oh, well, you know, um, that's just so we don't get sued for malpractice, you know, like we just have it for our employers just so we can like, you know, whatever, whatever. You shouldn't have said that he left. Okay, well, he was in our building and then he's no longer in our building. So should I have just told her that he was here and let her wait? At this point, like I'm getting snappy because I'm just like, there. I didn't do nothing wrong. Like I truly didn't feel like I didn't do anything wrong. And he was like, you know, you could have said that they went into the big building. Well, right when they came in, they said that they wanted to use the restroom and they didn't want to go in the big building because they required masks. So I took that information and I thought, well, maybe they're not going in the big building because they said they weren't going to go into the big building. At this point, like, I'm full on snapping back at my employer and he's like, you know, just take it easy. Don't be too worked up about it. And I, like, at that point, like, I wasn't even worked up about it, but the, the fact that he told me to calm down, calm down. Then at that point, I was worked up about it. He was getting worked up about it too because every point he made, I had a rebuttal for it because I knew I was right and he was in the wrong. And he was like, you know, we should try to be more customer friendly. These people have connections and like they're really powerful in the city and like, you know, they could leave reviews and like really tarnish our, you know, whatever, whatever. I don't even know if I can tell you guys this part, but with the worldly events going on right now and how dangerous it is and why we require face masks, he goes, oh yeah, well, they actually experienced it firsthand, so that's why they're so prissy about wearing masks. You would rather endanger your workers, yourself, and any other customers that come in after them because possibly they could contaminate the area with their firsthand experience with what's going on in the world right now because you don't want them to leave a few bad reviews. Like, like you worry about money, sir. Like, I understand. I understand that these people are powerful and can leave a review, but let's see how well you do if I let your name get out and your business and how you're endangering your coworkers. I go home to people who are immunocompromised, so what if I pa what if I caught something and I pass it on to them and then it will be on me? Like, it will be blood on my hands that I'm getting people sick left and right. Like, that ain't cute. So I'm just like, okay, whatever. So a few weeks go by, and this was up until last week, I think. I clock out from work. That was the day where I had, like, my personal 
thing that I had to deal with. So I was on my phone and I got caught being on my phone. I clock out and then I go, I'm like, do you need me to do anything else? Because I'm about to leave. And he was like, yeah, can you just have a seat real quick? I just want to chat with you. Basically, he told me that I need to get my shit together and work harder because I wasn't pulling my weight. He didn't say it like that, but that's what I heard in my head. He was like, for the past few weeks, I'm just trying to evaluate your work and it's just not up to standard. You are always on your phone, you're taking selfies, you're texting, it's on company time and you're always gossiping about me because I do, like I don't say nothing bad about him, but I'm just like, He's like, you know, you need to stop gossiping about me and the customers. You can have your own opinions, but don't drag the other coworker in with you. She's not a bad person. You know, you need to cut the banter. You're talking so much, and like, because you're talking, you two can't get your work done. Like, she gets her work done just fine, but you, you could just be quicker on what you do. And then he was like, what, what about me makes you so uncomfortable? Because I try to give you space. I don't want to be like a helicopter boss. First of all, she's a grown adult. So, I don't think I have any reign over her thoughts and emotions, so you're yelling at the wrong person. And like, I didn't say straight to his face that he makes me uncomfortable because he's a man! He's a man! And he mentioned that, like, I didn't have to make that sly comment about the printer. Like, he, he was like, you didn't have to say that about the printer, like, did you even look at it? The thing about the printer was, he was printing some things, it stopped printing, and then on my computer it popped up that it was out of paper. And I messaged him, and I was like, oh, it's out of paper, well, come back into my office and get it. And I was like, oh, okay, so I was, and then I messaged my coworker, and I was like, there's no paper, is there any paper, like, out in the front area? And she was like, oh, look in the drawer, so I look in the drawer, and I got it, and I was like, I stuck the paper into the machine, pushed the drawer closed and it was not doing nothing. And I was like, oh, it's not, I messaged my boss and I was like, it's still not going. And he was like, you gotta push the start button. And I was like, okay. So I pushed the start button and the things started going again. And I was like, okay, cool. The slight comment I made was, because he told me I had to push the button, I messaged my coworker and I was like, you know, I'm not comfortable on this machine. I'm not trained for it. It was a joke. It was a joke. Because at my, my other employment, I worked with machines. Like, it was food service. I worked with giant machines, like ovens and fryers and shit like that. And, like, you had to get training on the different parts if you wanted to do it. Like, if I wanted to use the fryer, I had to do a training checklist. And I had to check off all the boxes. And there were signatures and initials. Like, you had to be trained for it. So, it was a joke. It was a joke that I said that I wasn't trained on the machine. Like, damn, it wasn't a sly comment. My issue was that I thought people would understand my sense of humor. I told him, well, I'm just not used to those kinds of printers because usually when my printer runs out of paper, I just put more in and it just starts by itself. So I didn't know, my bad. We were just talking and I was like, okay, I'll do better. So we end the conversation. At this point, I was like, okay, this man doesn't like me. Oh, and one of the questions he asked was, what makes you so uncomfortable around me? Like I try to give you space and whatever, but it's not working. I don't know if it's because like we're just different people or if I'm just new to the, 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 the place of employment, but I looked at his previous employer, employees, and they were all female. And I was the first male, so I was just like, let's address that. Let's address that. I don't know if I can tell you guys this yet because I don't wanna uh, get evil eye. He mentions a lot about the competing company and how like their price is always high. Like there's never a day that goes by that he doesn't mention the competing company and how high their prices are. When I was thinking about quitting my current job with him, I was in contact with the competing company if you guys can catch my drift. I was just getting in touch with them, is all I'm saying. I quit my job, I went in and I was like, you know, I don't wanna work here no more, I'm gonna quit. So I resigned and then now I'm more in cahoots with with the competing company. If you guys if you guys can catch my drift, like, can you guys catch my drift? I just wanna come on here and talk to you guys about it because I don't wanna work no more. Like, I had to really sit back and reflect and ask myself if I wanted to jump into another, like, into another job immediately after quitting this job. One, because, like, I was wanting to, I still wanna look for, like, an apartment to live out on my own and, like, if I do, then I have bills to pay and, like, shit gets real and, like, you know, like, I can't be quitting jobs left and right. And I felt like such a fucking clown because, like, how can I be an adult if I can't even keep a job down? Like, that's embarrassing. That's cl that's clownery. Like, Hong Kong, give me my red nose. That's fucking clownery. I, I had to really evaluate myself and ask, what is it I want 
in my year off. Like I'm just taking one year off. So I just had to like, like, you know, I have to go ham in this. It's just the general thing about like working is that like if I, if I get an apartment, then I have to work more hours. And if I work more hours, then I can't keep up with making creative content because I'm like exhausting myself trying to pay bills. Hey guys, so I just want to clarify this spot right here. I'm not sitting here and saying that like, oh, like, I don't know. It just sounded like I was very complaining and like whining about working and shit like that. That's not how I try to come off. What I meant is I just have a fear of like time management. And I feel like that's like my biggest um, concern right now is that like if I work so many hours, then I don't have the time management. Like I feel like I don't have the time capacity. Like, things take time and I'm just fearful that if I take up too much time for one thing, I won't have more time for another one. So just to clarify that. But then if I stay in my home, it's just so toxic that I can't put out content because I'm not in the right headspace. And even my sister who lives on her own, she came back for to quarantine with us. Um, she was all like, yo, like the environment's very toxic. She, uh, she said that she feels like if I were to move out on my own, then I would have like the mental space. Like, yeah, I would be working more, but I would not have that mental taxation of being in a toxic household weighing me down. So like, like it's pros and cons, but one goes up, the other one goes up. One goes down, the other one goes down. If you guys kind of get what I mean. And I'm just like, okay, well, do I want to jump right into another job? Should I take some time off? Like what's going on? And I took a little mini vacation. I did a little road trip, still practicing social distancing and being safe, of course. And I just really, what I really want out of my life is that I want to be self-employed. I don't want no boss to report to, especially a man. Two, I don't want to wear no freaking uniform. Like, I don't want no dress code. I don't wear no dress shoes. I don't want to wear no dress shirt. Like, eh. And three, I don't want to work in no bleak office under fluorescent lights. Like, if I make my own office, I'm using LED. Honey, I'm using LED lights. Okay, honey. So that was just like the three things that I got out of this, honestly. It was an experience that I had to learn and that's why I'm sticking to my little YouTube. Very grateful. We're so close to a thousand subscribers. So if you're not subscribed, leave a subscribe down below. So yeah, that's just like kind of what happened. Well, right now I'm in a transition period, so it's not really much going on, except like I'm just staying home, trying to get creative and like putting things out for you guys. So. Um, if you guys have any input on my situation, leave a comment down below, or if you guys want to tell me about your experiences or what you're doing right now, leave that in the comments down below as well, and I'll see you guys in the next one, okay? Bye! Love you guys so much!